Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, September 1st, Labor Day weekend. It's time to go on the record. State Senator Eric Lesser calling out the registry for the failures that played a role in a highway tragedy. Is the agency changing direction fast enough? Senator Markey is a good man. I think I've got new ideas. I am running for re-election, uh, and I am going to crisscross this state and give it everything I've got. A Senate race that could become a heavyweight fight. Are these two ready to enter the ring? Labor Day. Do you have a presidential candidate for 2020 yet? From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to On the Record. I'm Ed Harding. My partner in crime, Janet Wu, is off for this Labor Day weekend. And our guest this morning is State Senator Eric Lesser. He's a Democrat. He represents the 1st Hamden and Hampshire District in western Massachusetts, which, for those that don't know, include which, which cities that people would know uh, about. So I represent Springfield and Chicopee and then Excellent. seven communities around. Excellent. Them. He took office in 2015. He grew up in Longmeadow, served as a White House aide during the Obama administration, administration and is a graduate of Harvard University and Harvard Law School. It's great to have you with us, sir, in this week. And let, let's jump right into the to the registry because that obviously has been a, a, a hot topic of conversation and it's and it's always been, yeah, you know, even yeah. through administration. So you've taken a leading role in the investigation in the lapses at the registry, which have been well documented. And in fact, you've questioned the independence of the team that was brought in by Governor Baker to do a review. Where do you stand right now about the on the registry? Well, we have a lot of questions that are left unanswered. You know, quite frankly, Ed, at the end of the day, these revelations really shock the conscience. This is not about pushing paper. This is about protecting the public. And what we've seen at the RMV and really in a systemic way is a lack of urgency around solving this problem. Questions the, like, for example. The most important takeaway I had from seven hours of testimony that the Transportation Committee did in July was that there were warnings. Uh -huh. The agency knew this was a problem. An audit was done that showed that there were nearly 13,000 unread out-of-state notifications sitting in a queue mm -hmm. and nobody did anything about it. We asked the head of safety, the head, the person responsible for closing that backlog, what did you do mm -hmm. about it? Mm -hmm. And he basically acknowledged, I told one IT person. Mm -hmm. That is a culture that needs to change and there really needs to be top to so bottom is the, is reforms. The, is, the, is the disconnect, uh, you know, bureaucratic red tape or is just the dis disconnect negligence? What, what is the disconnect? We don't have the full answers to that. So the, the audit that came out was a pre preliminary audit. There needs to be a complete and full audit, but very importantly, Ed, the independent legislative oversight process has to continue. I think that that audit is a good first step, but let's keep in mind that the mm -hmm. auditors work for MassDOT. They were commissioned internally by MassDOT to look at their own house. We need a separate branch of government, the legislature, to be taking a look at this. We know that our committee chairs have active requests for documents. Some of those requests have been met. A lot haven't, so there's still a lot of unanswered I, questions. I, I, I want to talk now about Thomas Bowes, because we week before it <clears throat> happened, you called for the firing of Thomas Bose. And if, for those of you who don't know, he's the director, or was the director of the Merit Rating Board. He admitted stopping the processing of alerts from other states. What does that say? What, what yeah. in and of itself does that say? By the way, if you don't know, you've seen this picture from yeah. New Hampshire, the disaster Awful. up in New Hampshire. Yeah. So I think, first of all, I'm glad you're showing those pictures because we need to remember why we're here, which is people lost their lives because of decisions, in part because of decisions that were made in a state government that is supposed to be responding to people and protecting the public. Thomas Bowes had to go. At the end of the day, the head of, of the agency responsible for closing the backlog in those notifications did not close the backlog in those notifications. But that is the minimum mm -hmm. to restore public confidence and to begin the process of moving forward with the changes that have to be made. There are a lot more changes that need to be made. So I view the resignation or the firing of Thomas Bose to be the start of a process, frankly, of cleaning house at the RMV and making sure that we are protecting the public. So in, in that vein, what do you say about the resignation of Aaron Devaney, who was at the top of the registry? Yeah. I do, you know, Aaron immediately resigned, which was the right thing to do. But again, you know, we can't have scapegoats. Uh, and one of the things I'm concerned about, quite frankly, is you had the RMV head immediately out of town. Mm -hmm. You know, immediately uh, run out of town. You had the MRB head after really months, several weeks of, uh, of back and forth, finally is fired. But well, the last thing, the worst thing that could happen is those two people go and then the Department of Transportation says we're done here. Right, right. That's very dangerous. And I think the legislature needs to stay on top of this. And they are. Uh, but the legislature needs to stay on top of this to make sure that we're continuing to push for those changes. We're continuing to get answers to those questions. I mean, one revelation, just as an example, Ed, from that Grant Thornton uh, audit report that came out is that a, a, a staff member looked 
at the record for the gentleman Physically from West Springfield for seven seconds, yeah. I believe, or six yeah. seconds. I mean, yeah. the culture that develops that allows something like that to happen uh, and there not to be serious repercussions, I think, is very important. So, so let's let, let's continue to walk up the ladder. Governor Baker has steadfastly stood by the MassDOT CEO Stephanie Pollack with the situation at the RMV and the constant breakdowns at the <coughs> MBTA. Is that confidence well placed? Do you think in Stephanie Pollack from the governor? I think the question is still out. I think we have a lot of questions that still need to be answered. So I think it's, you know, to be seen whether the confidence is in place. One of the things I'm particularly interested in finding out at is what did the governor know and when did he know it mm -hmm. about the issues at the RMV, about the frankly just gross mismanagement. Was there, for example, an overemphasis on the customer facing elements of the RMV reducing the wait times, which were worthy goals that the legislature supported. But in focusing, for example, on those customer focused elements, did they take their eye off the ball on the back end safety issues? Issues. Those are important questions. We we don't have the full answers. To I, I just heard you say, "What did the governor know, and when right. did he know it?" I mean, you're you're even a rung higher. The governor had you know comes in. It, it came in originally as the reputation as a fixer. Right. It, it, so. Is it reached for it? What is he fixed? I guess is, 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 is a question. I'm well, asking. time time will tell. Quite frankly, at the urgency, you know, they 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 said the right things immediately after the accident. But what we're going to be focused on is the diligent work of actually fixing the problem long term. Who's being replaced? They were announcing, for example, a new uh, deputy registrar for safety. What exactly is that person going to do? Mm -hmm. There was already someone in the organizational chart who was responsible for this who wasn't doing it. Mm -hmm. So what is adding one more layer of bureaucracy? going to do to get the problem solved. We have a lot of questions. There's going to be more hearings and we're going to have uh, the need for a lot more answers. Well, what about the issue? I, I don't want to get too down into the weeds, but what about the issue of liability? I mean, could the state be yeah. facing years of lawsuits yeah. because of this? So I, you know, I think that that's a question that we need to get count. You know, we need to get opinions from our counsel on. We need to talk to the attorney general about that. I am concerned about that. Uh, it's not something I'm, I'm qualified necessarily to answer. My focus as a legislator, my mm -hmm. focus as a member of the transportation committee, Mm -hmm. is on making sure we're protecting the public and making sure that we are passing laws and making changes so that this doesn't happen again. And we need a partner in the governor to do that. All right, uh, let's shift to the next topic. And, and we were talking about this before we came on the air, rail, yeah. rail transportation. Yeah. Governor Baker met with governors from three other states last week in town to talk about traffic congestion and what to do about traffic congestion. Yeah. Is it fair to say you're a big supporter of, of rail? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Rhode Island's governor wants to see faster service between Boston and Providence. You want to See the same thing between Boston and Springfield. Yep. I'm going to ask you a simple question, but but I'm curious to your answer. Would that be a game changer for Western Massachusetts? There is nothing that we can do, quite le quite frankly, for this entire state that, that would be a bigger game changer than high-speed rail service connecting Springfield, Worcester, and Boston. It would transform our entire state. Think about the two biggest challenges we're facing as a commonwealth. One is the out-of-control housing prices in the metro Boston area and the awful traffic, the awful congestion. People are pulling their hair out. You cannot get anywhere. No no one can afford to live in Metro Boston. In Western Mass, we're facing really the inverse challenge, which is we've got mm -hmm. great quality of life, great places to live, but we're not producing enough high paying jobs. We're not producing an economy that's growing fast enough. East West Rail solves both problems at the same time. It gives Western Mass access to that great economy in Eastern Mass. It gives people in Eastern Mass access to a really affordable, really high quality, um, but affordable way of life. So we need to really think big about these congestion problems. If we keep doing the balls, you know, the singles and doubles mm -hmm, here and there. Mm -hmm. We're just going to still be stuck in traffic. So you want to hit a home run. And That's this would create yeah. thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of jobs. The construction jobs alone, alone. Yeah. would be put so many people to work. You think about the investment it would have in real estate. You think about the new business creation. It would help people. It would create jobs. It would put people to work. And it would take tens of thousands of cars off the road, which helps congestion and it reduces greenhouse gas Well, look gas at the people that, that, that do take an hour, an hour and 15, an hour and a half to travel now from Braintree, for right. example. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Take the same time and you can live in Worcester, right? Exactly. All right, or even Springfield. All right, I'm going to do the OTR pop quiz. You ready? All right, oh boy. Here we My first time. You're the first one to say, oh boy. <laughs> I've never heard that before. All right, uh, since you are from <clears throat> Worcester, Massachusetts, we will start with a question with ties to the 413. Up until 1988, Massachusetts had just two area codes, 413 for Western Mass, 617 for Eastern. Your next question is, what was the next area code that was introduced on the screen? We have multiple choice. Was it 978? Was it 781? Was it 508? Oh, this is a good question. I'll guess A, 978. It was 508 introduced ah. in July of 1988, originally covered central Massachusetts, the North Shore, the South Coast, as well as Cape and the Islands. You're a graduate of Longmeadow High School. 
A 1989 graduate who was captain of the girls' soccer, basketball, and lacrosse teams went on to become a rather notable actress. No multiple choice. Do you know who that is? Are you talking about Bridget Moynihan? I'm talking All about right. Bridget Moynihan. Longmeadow's Long Meadows own Bridget Long Moynihan. Longmeadow's own Bridget Moynihan. Of course, she and Tom Brady have a son. They're the parents of John Edward Thomas Moynihan, who was born in 2008. We continue on the record with Eric Lester. Stay with us.